Let's do another one-dimensional case. Let's deal with an animal population model in which x is the number of animals at a time t. So if we wanted to make a model of this, we would say x prime equals, and then it's of course what makes x go up minus what makes x go down. So let's do some modeling. What makes x go up, we're going to assume is a birth rate. What makes x go down, we're going to assume it's a death rate. But of course, so far, these are words. And by the way, when you are modeling, I strongly, strongly recommend that you proceed like I'm proceeding, which is you start by writing words so that you understand what term is doing what. Okay, I need a birth rate term. Okay, I need a death rate term. Write down the words because the words are telling you what the model should be representing. Then put in the math at the last instance so that you know what the math is supposed to be representing. So how do we represent a birth rate for an animal population? Well, you might say, oh, I studied animal ecology. Uh, birth rate is very complicated. It depends upon this, and it depends upon that, and it depends upon the food supply, and it depends upon the number of animals, and it depends upon the temperature, and it depends upon the season, and it depends upon the disease state of the animal. And all of those things are true. However, we're going to ignore all of them today and make our first, my first model, make a very simple model that has a constant per capita birth rate. So let me dwell on that subject a little bit because I want to explain what I mean by a per capita birth rate. So per capita just means per head or per animal. So if we say that the per capita birth rate is 0.2, what that means is each animal per head, per animal, has a 0.2 probability of giving rise to an offspring which means that the total change in the population is going to be the per capita birth rate times the number of capitas there at that time, or 0.2 times x. So we can now write x prime equals 0.2 x. And now we need something to subtract. But you say, hey, what if we didn't have something to subtract? Well, this is a model. And this is a model without a death rate and with only positive terms. Since x is positive, 0.2x is going to be positive. This is only going to be positive terms. And it says that x is going to grow and grow and grow and grow because nothing is subtract. Nothing is making x go down. And if nothing makes x go down, x will only go up. So we do need to be realistic. We do need to add something there. And that's going to be a death rate. Now, we could also simply postulate a per capita death rate, which I will call d, 
and then what we have, it would be the model x prime equals bx minus dx. And now again, you will say, well, the death rate of an animal population, well, that depends upon the availability of resources. It depends upon the density of the animals. It depends upon the temperature. All of that is true. And we're going to start in months to come, we're going to start layering in all of those complexities to get a pretty sophisticated model. But right now, day one, D is a constant, and we'll say it's uh, 0.1. So now we have a definite model. Now, of course, since B and D are both constant, it's easy to pull them out and write B minus D times X. In this case, X prime equals 0.1X, and this is our net model of birth and death in the animal population. So now we're ready to look at a change equation in two variables. And now it gets to be interesting because we are now going to develop our shark tuna model. So the, we know the state variables. The state variables are S and T, the number of sharks, and the number of tuna. And so we follow the procedure and we write down T prime and S prime. And we put little equal signs here. And now we ask what makes T go up, or actually the first thing I'm going to do is what makes T go down, plus what makes T go up. And then what makes sharks go up, and what makes sharks go down. No, that's a plus. What makes sharks go up? minus what makes sharks go down. So, let's get started. For my what makes tuna go up term, I'm just going to assume that there is a constant birth rate applied to the tuna population, that there's a tuna birth rate BT, and that's going to be applied to the tuna population. That's super simple. When I model what makes sharks go down, again, we're going to model that with a super simple assumption, which is that sharks die at a constant rate d. And that's the per capita death rate of sharks and BT is the per capita birth rate of tuna. Now notice, by writing DSS, the constant per capita death rate, I'm assuming that the death rate of sharks is not limited by the number of tuna. It's not changed by the number of tuna. It's not changed by disease. It's not changed by anything. There is a constant death rate. Sharks just die at a constant old age death rate. Now, the two interesting terms are what make the tuna go down and what make the sharks go up, because those two terms depend not just upon T and upon S, but upon the encounters between T and S. What makes T go down is encounters between sharks and tuna, or to put it simply, shark meets tuna is what tuna makes tuna go down, and shark meets tuna is what makes sharks go up. But now we have to scratch our heads a little bit and figure out how to write this shark meets tuna term. 
So first of all, let's look at the shark meets tuna term here in the tuna equation. And let's ask what that looks like. Well, one way to model it, to model this term, is to say it's like a death rate on the number of tuna. So there's going to be a big minus sign there. But instead of a constant per capita death rate there, we're going to say that the death rate, not the natural death rate, but the shark-induced death rate is proportional to the number of sharks. So we have an ST term here for the shark meets tuna, because the more sharks, the more tuna deaths. And the more sharks, the more shark meets tuna, which is the more tuna deaths. So shark meets tuna is an ST term because the death of T at the hands of the sharks is proportional to the number of sharks. But then the question is proportional with what proportionality constant? If the proportionality constant was 1, then what that says is every encounter between a shark and a tuna is going to result in the death of the tuna. In other words, sharks are completely efficient hunters. Every time they're in the presence of a tuna, they kill and eat the tuna. That's not true. Only a fraction of shark tuna encounters actually end up in the death of the tuna. And so we have a parameter here that is a very widely used parameter and is something you're going to hear again and again and again. And that is the parameter Greek letter lowercase beta. And beta, in this case, is the success rate of sharks on tuna. If their success rate is 100%, then beta equals 1. If their success rate is 10%, then beta equals 0.1. And this beta parameter is something which you'll see again and again in the models as we develop them, becomes a very important parameter uh, to use to model different kinds of conditions, to model disease conditions, to model intervention conditions, and you'll be hearing a lot about beta. So we have our term. Our term is beta st for the shark meets tuna term. So let's just put that in there. OK, what about the shark meets tuna term in the S prime equation? Well, clearly, every time a shark meets a tuna and has a successful, from the shark's point of view, has a successful encounter with the tuna, the shark population is going to go up. But the question is, how much is it going to go up? And that depends upon the size of sharks <laughs> and the size of tuna. <laughs> if sharks are large and tuna are small, then one shark tuna encounter is not going to uptick the shark population by very much. Whereas if tuna are large, then one shark tuna encounter could be enough to give rise to one new baby shark. And so what we need in this term, in the shark prime equation, is definitely the beta st, which is going to be the number of sh successful shark tuna encounters. But now we need another parameter called m, which is the mass 
effect of the tuna. How many tuna do you have to eat to give birth to one new shark? So now we have a model. There are one, two, three, four parameters in this model. We can set them from data. We can set them to nominal values to test the dynamics of the model. But this is a two-dimensional model. Um, it actually has a name. These are called the latka volterra equations, or the latka volterra model. And there it is. It says that the amount of sharks and the amount of tuna will go up and down according to these quantities. Now you ask, what will happen? What behavior does this model predict? And that's an excellent question, and we're going to get to it. But right now, let's just realize that we have a definite model. We have made a statement about how the number of sharks and tuna will change which depends only upon the current number of sharks and tuna. So now we have two concepts. We talked about state space, and we talked about trajectories in state space. And then we also talked about models. X prime equals yada, 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 and Y prime equals yada, yada, yada. And here I'm going to use the general mathematical notation, y prime, X prime equals F, some function F of X, Y, and Y prime is some function G of X, Y. And in this previous, F of ST is minus beta ST plus beta T. And G of ST is m beta st minus dss. 